Hey guys, Doug from Motion Raceworks. Welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. I know a lot of people are rounding the corner on their projects, so I've had a lot of people asking about blow-off valves. If this is your first combo or your second combo or you just have general questions, I thought I'd make this video to kind of clear up the air. There's not as much that goes into sizing blow-off valves and stuff as there is wastegates. So a lot of times, wastegates, you want to have something to compare it to, but blow-off valves, the nice, simple, short answer is you cannot over blow off valve a car. Basically, if you aren't familiar with a blow off valve, it is simply a bypass valve for boost on the charge side of your turbo setup. So anything coming off the compressor that's either going into an intercooler and then the intake, or like this one as an intake intercooler all in one, you're basically letting all that boost pressure out before it hits the intercooler and it hits the intake. So it's simply a protection mechanism for the turbo, your intake, and your intercooler. That's all it is, it's nothing more. Every different brand makes them. Uh, here I got a JGS one and a Precision one. Uh, the difference in these two uh, beyond looks is just that this one is actually a piston operated. So it has a piston with O-rings that moves it up and down. Um, and this has a diaphragm. Both work really well. Really don't see a whole lot of issues with uh, wastegates except for some of the cheap imported ones just don't seal up, so then you have a constant boost leak. So it's definitely not somewhere you wanna ch uh, cheap out on because obviously if things come apart, it's gonna go into your intake. If it leaks, you're really never gonna make the power you need to. Let's move on to talking about why it's important to have a blow off valve. You know, a lot of diesel guys don't run them. Um, they also don't have throttle bodies on the diesel engine, so that's one of the biggest reasons. Uh, most diesel engines don't have a throttle body, so the engine's always going to just pull that boost down into the cylinders. But that's a whole different world. Uh, you know, we cater mostly to gasoline engine guys, street and strip type of applications. Okay, so on to what they protect. So on a turbocharger, um, let's just consider that we're at 7,000 or 8,000 RPMs and we're making 30 pounds of boost. Basically what you're protecting on a turbocharger is if you pump up, if you're pumping a bunch of boost at big RPM, you know, the turbo's being driven off of the engine side of things, and all of a sudden you slam the uh, throttle blade shut, you now have a wall where boost is backing up against the turbo. So until the engine comes down, it's still, the turbo's still spinning. So now you have forces on the back and the front of the compressor blade. And uh, what that does is it will actually start to load the wheel and the shaft inside of the turbo really weird, and it'll prematurely wear out bearings. A lot of times you'll see people like that, especially with journal bearing stuff, you'll wear bearings out and then you'll have a bunch of shaft play and stuff like that. And that's not the only reason uh, you can develop shaft play, but it definitely will prematurely wear out a turbocharger. So definitely something you don't want to do. Turbochargers aren't cheap, and uh, the last thing you want to do is wear one out because they never wear out at an optimal time. Intercooler wise, intercoolers are welded pieces typically, and uh, some are sheet metal, some are cast aluminum, and you know they might pressure check them and stuff, but the forces that you're seeing on an engine when you dump the throttle and everything just backs up and balloons and just really kind of stops, stops motion altogether will blow an intercooler up. Every year you see at the track people that'll split an air to water intercooler, they'll split an air to air. So basically this allows the air to escape so that you don't have any risk of doing that. And the same thing for the intake. With sheet metal intakes, you definitely don't wanna put a bunch of extra air that's, you know, when you have a stop against them and it's not using the air, all of a sudden it balloons and it'll blow up, um, same as it would with a backfire. Lastly, the throttle body. If you've been to like a big drag radial race, especially years ago, they used to make the throttle bodies out of real thin aluminum because back, you know, when you first started racing, you weren't making a lot of power, they were NA. The throttle body blade really didn't need to be that durable or strong for any reason in particular. So they would start cramming boost in these things and they would shut the, you know, shut the throttle. And if you had a good enough return spring, hopefully it would close. And then it would actually just bend the throttle body blade up. So now you have a real problem, obviously, for racing and the engine's still taking in boost when you're trying to shut it down type of thing. Definitely something you want to avoid. So the next question I get from people is, how does it work? It's as simple as this. You're going to plummet right to boost reference on the intake. So when there's positive boost, it's going to hold the blow-off valve shut. When you dump the throttle and the engine loses all that, 
it's going to let off of that boost and then go into vacuum. But basically the force from the compressed air is gonna push that valve open when there's no boost on the backside of this thing. It's just gonna let the air out. And then once it's in vacuum, you'll actually see a car um, up with a blow-off valve at idle. The, the valve will actually move up and down because they have these little windows here. So you can actually see it physically opening you know, at idle. Um, both of these are gonna act the same way. So basically all it is is just got a top hat design. So like I said, when it has boost, it's gonna you know, shove that diaphragm down and in turn shove this valve down. Uh, same thing for this. And then when it has vacuum, it's gonna suck that diaphragm back up the other way and open it up. Now you'll see these actually have two ports on them. Uh, some blow off valves have two ports, some don't. This uh, one from JGS has one and same was as Precision. And the reason I have that is there's a couple different strategies and this is by no means something a lot of beginners do, but uh, guys with superchargers will actually hook up a valve so they can um, open and close this similar to how you would do with a wastegate so they can bleed off boost. So they'll put you know, the, the small pulley on the blower and turn it all the way up and then they'll just control their boost through the blow off valve by letting boost bleed off. The other thing some folks will do with turbo stuff, especially I think in the motorcycle world, it's really big. And then if you have a huge turbocharger on a small motor in the car world, what you can actually do is when you're trying to build boost, you can hook, hook up a solenoid to the bottom port and push that uh, wastegate open. And what that allows you to do is to freewheel the turbo. So when that pipes open, the turbo isn't trying to push against, you know, and build boost. When it can freewheel like that, it's just gonna spin real fast. And then once they get up to the RPM and boost level that they like, release that solenoid, slam the blow off valve shut. At that point, you can go ahead and make the boost you want. So it's just kind of a boost building technique. So just like a wastegate, you're gonna have one port on top and sometimes one port on bottom. So it's as simple as hooking this right up to somewhere in your intake manifold. So it sees the variation between boost and vacuum. I prefer to always plumb that stuff with push to connect because it's one less line to blow off and have a boost leak. Okay, so the last thing we'll talk about is position. So it's really not rocket science. Um, like I said before, you cannot over blow off valve a car. You can put two huge 64 millimeter blow off valves on basically anything and uh, it's gonna keep it closed. And then when you want the boost off, it'll pull the boost off. So you can't over blow off valve it. But position is kind of important. I guess the best way to think about this is what are you trying to protect with it? So, you know, if you have a sheet metal, like a four, three or $4,000 air to water intercooler in your passenger seat, um, and you think about air coming in from the turbo into that intercooler, and then all of a sudden you slam the throttle body closed, you're gonna wanna get that air out. So you could put one right before the intercooler, um, you could put one right before the throttle blade, and that would protect your two sources. Everybody has a different strategy, but I guess what I'm getting at is the closer in proximity to the piece that you're trying to protect they are, the better you're going to protect them because it'll take less time to bleed that charge directly from the source of the location where it's at. Like on my stuff, I usually will put them right before the throttle body, especially on this. You'll want to have one right here. Um, obviously your pipes are going to be real short, but uh, you'll have it right before that sheet metal intake. Uh, that'll protect that. And then the times when I've run a air to water intercooler, I'll put one right before the air to water intercooler. That way you shut that throttle body, the air is still coming in from the turbo. It's now redirected. So it's really that simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Like I said, make sure you buy a quality one because we see tons of people um, trying to trace down boost leaks. A lot of time you don't even know you have a boost leak. You just have a combo that's kind of a turd, to be honest with you. And so it doesn't make a lot of power. You really don't know because you don't know that it's missing. And if it's a new combo, you're like, well, it's just really not that effective. You could have a leaky blow off valve and a bunch of other things. So I think Turbo, we carry Turbo Smart, JGS, and Precision. All three of them have done really well for us. They've never steered us wrong. Definitely don't be afraid to over blow off valve something and uh, make sure you protect everything. Thanks for tuning in guys. I hope this opened your eyes and gave you a little bit of info on the blow-off valves. They're really not that complicated. It's a simple bypass valve. If you ever have questions or concerns, give us a call, send us an email. I'll put both of those in the description below. If you have questions uh, or wanna see something else covered on our next Tech Tip Tuesday, 
Drop it in the comments below. We do read them. That's how we get our ideas. We want to see what you guys want to know. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. We will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.